ladies and gentlemen, our final matchup of the week is a battle between the veterans of the new Element Squad versus the Power Ponies of Pink, the Unicorns of Love. Crepo, this is going to be an exciting match, a very, very distinct clash of styles, I would think. Yeah, if we can, like... Elements only elements, showed so much yeah, so if far, we, if it's we true. extrapolate their one game sample size to call that their style, it's going to be definitely a clash of styles, but... I want to see how they develop over the course of the split. Definitely keep my eye on that squad. After nine games uh, in European LCS, if you're getting tired right now, you, Unicorns of Love, usually nice way to finish the weekend. Mm -hmm. Lots of aggression. It's very relaxing. Yeah, very, it's very, very calm. You know. Very calm, and you know, you know what to expect. Everything, all the time. Yeah. No kills at all. No. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we'll have to see if that is uh, completely false or not. We're lining up elements on the blue side. We're going to go ahead and take a look at their new roster. It is, of course, JWoww, Dexter, Froggen, Tabs, Promiscue, and, of course, the coach Niff. Uh, well, that last match we saw, they gave up early towers, but they farmed up, they turned on the gas, and they were able to convert it into a W. Yeah, you say it right there, they gave up early towers, but if we, stylistically, if we assume that this is a style Elements likes playing, it might be good against the Unicorns of Love, because they're not notorious for taking too many towers. They want kills, but Elements was fine fighting, they just didn't really care too much about their towers. If UL doesn't really do the same thing, they might fall into the same trap. Mm -hmm. uh, Elements, yeah, they did look good yesterday. I think the game was called too much of a stomp against Gambit. I think it was really, really even up until the tipping point. Well, we'll have to see if uh, it's a repeat or not for this game. We'll have to see. Well, on the other side of the rift, Unicorns are certainly not hoping a, for a repeat of yesterday's performance. They are going to be on that red side of the rift. It is, of course, Visit Chachi in the top lane, Kickus in the jungle, Power of Evil in the mid, Vardags and Hillisang rounding out that bot lane, and their coach, Sheepy. We've had success in the past now with these poke compositions, and the Kogma, I feel like they relied on it a little bit too much. He did more damage than the rest of his team put together, Krepo. Yeah, so he had 52% of the damage distribution of his team. But I like Pokoms too, if you build around them. I, what I don't like is building one composition and then at the last second saying, hey guys, how about we make this a Pokom? And that's exactly what Unicorns of Love did yesterday. And I felt that's where they dropped the ball. Uh, in addition to playing rather poorly uh, in the early game, yes, uh, Power Evil did a lot of damage. Yes, he played his Kog'Maw ball, but you will never get to a 50% damage split uh, team-wise unless everybody else is kind of dropping the ball. But props to Power of Evil for staying mm -hmm. into the game. While casting that game, I actually wrote him off a little bit too early. I thought this game was going very one-sided, but then they managed to keep that gold lead down to 3,000, 4,000 gold for a very, very long time and have the ability to maybe come back into the game. So nice resilience from the Unicorns, but again, Wishy-washy, 50-50, you know, aggression, and yeah. then giving up kills. Is that something we're going to see continuing? Or are the Unicorns going to tighten up their play? Yeah, it really was a big question on our minds. You know, all that all that information we had from the spring split, they were you know, pretty much even kills for deaths. That always that crazy aggression. We said it yesterday. They never seem to have that pause button. And they're going to have to develop it sooner or later. Teams will start to figure out, as crazy as their strategies are, how to beat them. Yeah, exactly. If you play a... a singular style or very one-dimensional even though they're unpredictable they're predictable in their unpredictability while that sounds like absolute nonsense if you know that they're always going to go crazy then you can rely on bringing it back to a safe calculated macro game and maybe essentially just bait them out in situations where they take the losses if you compare that to Fnatic in the spring split they had aggression but it always seems to work out. Either they trade kills mm -hmm. uh, advantageously, they trade more kills than they give up, they trade kills plus a tower for a kill. That's what I like to see the Unicorns evolve more to. But we have to remember, first time in the LCS loss split and immediately finish second, I think you can be very, very happy with that. Yeah, I definitely think that that's something to be proud of. And of course, uh, yesterday, you know, it's hard to judge on just that performance. It was against Fnatic, the reigning champions in Europe, uh, after their massive performance at MSI. But they just, Unicorns just seemed very surprised in the pick ban phase. I mean, I, I think that was what was really crucial, what really hit home for them. And they let Fnatic dictate the pace of the game. When the Unicorns mm -hmm. aren't marching to their own beat, they always seem out of step. Yeah, but we just saw quite how good of a team Fnatic is. So we'll have to see how Unicorn friends against the other teams. Because they finished second after Fnatic, which in theory proves that they should be better or on par with the other teams. And yes, they kind of got confused. And I said it earlier, they were making one type of composition and switched it over all the way at the end into more of a poke comp. Hopefully they don't make the same mistake again. I just can't wait to see this draft pyro. Yeah, I, I think it's it's going to be a lot of mind games flying back left and right. You know, and for elements, again, we have a very small sample size to work with. We've only seen that one game, but some standout performances for them. I think it was pretty awesome the way Dexter was able to play. I think they exposed Gambit and a lot of weaknesses that team has. But, you know, as the teams are getting ready for champ select here, let's hear how Tabs thinks about UOL's signature style and how he thinks it can be a double-edged sword.
I think UL wins most of their games because they keep forcing their opponents to fight them and they pick really strong fighter comps and the enemy just doesn't know how to deal with the fact that they constantly have to fight them. You can beat it by just being stronger and fight and that's also how they lose a lot of their games because if they're not strong enough to fight you then they'll straight up lose them so, and lose all the objectives. Yeah, if you don't uh, win the fights, you're probably not going to win the game. Yeah, but it, it's especially against a player like Tabs. I had the, the fortune of playing a little bit with him when I was still scrimming with Elements. He is a, a fantastically smart player. In addition to being a great AD carry, he also has a good sense of rotational play, and he brings that extra element into Elements right here, where he can be pseudo